John, how are you? Hi, Josette. I'm doing well. How are I, you? I'm good. Thank you. What an honor to have you. This is Shaman John Rasmussen. And John is globally renowned as a shaman, a spiritual healer, an advisor. Um, he is a full-time shaman, advisor, I'm reading your bio here, speaker, mm -hmm. author of the book, Dreaming Your World Into Being, The Shaman Secrets to Having the Life You Desire Now. Holy cow, what a title that is. Um, you have some CDs, Practical Meditations for the Modern Lifestyle and Shamanic Journeys to Empower Your Life. That's amazing. And I know that there's so much more. People know you very well from The Low Files, uh, working with Rob uh, on The Low Files. And you are the co-creator of the new Ascension Rights course. Is that true? An yeah. online book with videos that give you simple new tools to ease your mind and make everything else easier in your life. We all need this. Hmm. Your health, relationships, and work to your resources. Now, I am, it's always a privilege to have time to spend with you, um, both as a, a friend and a fellow human but your wisdom and your depth of knowledge on just tools to help people step into their own extraordinary mm. is, is amazing. Tell me a little bit more about what a shaman is and what draw, drew you to becoming a shaman. Yes, for sure. Um, shaman is really kind of the most primal, I think in a way, uh, moniker for those who are born with the desire and ability to help the villagers um, in any way necessary um, by accessing the forces of nature primarily. And to shamans, there's no separation of spirit and matter. It hasn't gotten that, that, that complex. It's, it's nature and it's physical and it's non-physical form. And it's there for us, you know, feeds our bodies. It takes our wastes and mulches it, gives us new, more food. Um, the sun warms us, the stars and the planets, you know, provide their light and their energy. And, um, and so the shaman's real task is, is a kind of mediator between the forces of nature in this physical and non-physical world for the benefit of those who are asking. And it has very much to do with freeing and empowering everybody to be able to be the creators of their own experience, to, to dream their own world into being. Um, and to hopefully never have to call on the shaman, but to just be their own shaman and do, do these things. And in a very, and, and I think, the goal being in a very practical, pragmatic way, life here in the present moment in physical form on this planet, is it more of what you want to experience and less of what you don't want? Is it more pleasure than pain? Is it more heaven on earth or hell on earth for you? You know, because that's all happening in here. It's happening in here. It's not somewhere else. We're very much about, no, it's not out there, it's here. So that's it, that's, that's shaman. And, and it's, it's been in every culture and every part of the world since anyone can remember. It's called different things in different languages. So shaman is a Tungus word that has been largely adopted um, across cultures, but it's different names. And, um, and it's different fields of work. In other words, you could be a shaman and be a writer, an artist, a, a, a singer, a dancer, a teacher, a, a mom, a, father a window washer i mean it's not what you do it's more who you are hmm. so it's just how maybe you're able to uh, be a good influence and be helpful when people are asking so do you find that um it's interesting because i know from my own perspective and that's the only perspective i can really come from right is that in order to to let everybody else off the hook i had to go through a real kick in the ass. I mean, I had to have a disease. I had to have all of this trauma hit me 
to kind of shake me up to realize that I can't blame anybody else or anything else for my own life. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it was such a huge um, empowering thing to take responsibility and to cut everybody else off the hook. How do you help people do that who aren't going through a dark moment? How, what tools do you give people for that? Well, interestingly, I mean, what you describe is in, in our mostly modern world now, kind of one of the ways that it, that you get there, right? It's kind of the hard way to have to go through something like that to finally sort of access these things. What we like to do is try to preempt that if possible. And, and of course, that's what's missing in our culture. We don't have the shamanic training. We don't have these things being taught to us as children that we, we used to in our villages. And where you could start to do deliberate ritual and ceremony, deliberate death rites, and and you know myth, you know um, mythic acts and acts of power you know deliberately taking yourself into the in into the woods on a vision quest for a week without food and and face your fears and so it does happen lar <laughs> largely when it's kind of forced upon us through through an illness or something like that and it's an opportunity to if you take it with an act of power like you did to to get to that next. Um, level of freedom and power. So really um, going through the training that helps uh, someone born, born with these gifts to use them in a way that's most effective and efficient to really try to do it more the easy way than the hard way to access some of these rituals deliberately and sort of preemptively. Um, this, is the, this is what what I try to do, you know, and this is my teachers. Um, and, but it, it, there's no judgment as to how it's done. I mean, there's no, there's no right or wrong. There's no judge or scorekeeper that says, well, you know, it's better if you, if you do it before you get sick. No, I mean, it's just is what it is. If it, and, and it's true that shamans have been initiated in that way. Also from the very beginning, you get struck by lightning, you get, you know, you'd eat some poison, like all kinds of things would happen to people um, going, you know, several hundred thousand years ago that would still be like the wake up moment of, oh, I see that I'm more than my physical body. I see how powerful I am. My mind can be, you know, how I'm thinking, all these wisdom teachings that we know about and, and have been studying for so long about the I am, you know, what I am healthy is going to help manifest healthy versus I am sick or I am or victim res victim perpetrator rescuer versus creator consciousness you know things happen to me painful things happen they did that and it it hurt me but it's really up to me to decide going forward you know am I the victim of that or do I just kind of regroup keep my power decide what I want going forward anyway and do it and that's what you did with your you know your illness in, in a sense right, right. you you didn't let it take you as a story for the rest of your life. You said, geez, this is a brutal story and all the doctors are telling me that it's a, it's a permanent story. And you went, well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> you know, they could be wrong. Right, well, and that's why I'm so fascinated with what you do because you really have to drink from a deeper well, so to speak, with mm -hmm. this. And I think that there is, there is a, um, an outcry of humanity specifically in this moment where people are desperate to drink from a deeper well and to understand their own power their own power um to 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 create like you say everything that they want right. and i don't know that people are aware that they have this power so i'm i'm Again, I'm I'm super stoked to even get to talk to you. What drew you into becoming a shaman? What's your story? Um, it was a it was a long search. It was a long journey, uh, relatively speaking, I guess you could say. But early in my childhood, I I didn't fit in. I didn't. Uh, I I saw the world upside down, as my te my Carol teachers would say. Everything was sort of not the way I thought it should be. It was odd. Um, it was obviously, obviously dysfunctional, not very healthy and all kinds of things like that, right? And out of touch with nature and everything. And I somehow had a, had a real clear sense of that and a real clear vision of that. And then I had some, I had actually a few 
near death experiences early on in my life that again, the hard way of getting that 30,000 foot view of what's really happening. And it just sort of um, strengthened that. And then I realized that I luckily sort of in a way, in a very grounded way, I realized I needed to get with the program anyway. So I tried to be normal. I tried to be like my brothers. I tried to stick with, you know, play the rules, go to school, do the right, get good grades, try to get a job, <clears throat> et cetera. But all the while, I had this incredible fascination with all things spiritual, religious, philosophical. So very early on, I'd say in high school, I started to really study everything I could around that kind of stuff and just continued, you know, to, that was just my, oh, this is amazing. This is fascinating. This is what I think I saw. This is how it works. This doesn't make sense. That makes sense. And I didn't know what to do with that. I mean, what do you do? You know, you become a priest, maybe, you know, being raised Catholic. How do you, how do you fulfill that, that sort of quest? And I did end up studying all kinds of healing modalities and dove into many yogic traditions and meditations and things. And I, so I was, I was just searching, I guess you could really say in a very classical sense. And uh, in a very synchronistic way, ended up um, meeting, you know, this Dr. Alberto Vialdo and his Healing the Light Body School. I've been working with these Caro shamans from Peru who are very unique, been isolated for several hundred years. And the synchronicity was that someone I had, one of the great healers that I had been going to was very, very psychic or however you want to say it, once told me that when I asked him, well, what is, what am I here to do? Because I, I was still trying to figure out what, what's my work. And he said the words mediator of souls between the worlds. And I went, but I don't even like, what is that? And a year later I met up or was, I think it was a few years later actually um, is when I read Alberto Vialdo's book and I was fascinated and I, about shamanism and I went and the first thing he said in the workshop was a shaman is just a mediator of souls between the worlds. So it made it obvious. <laughs> I think one of my great prayers in life that I teach a lot of people is, you know, make it obvious, make it easy for me. Like, I don't, if I need to know something, can you just put it right there? Because <laughs> why make it harder, right? So that was a blessing for me that it was that easy. Wow, what a story. Yeah. And then the training begins, right? So then your work really begins because right. then you're healing your stuff. So you're not in the way. So you're as unattached and unoffendable and non-judging and everything you can possibly be, as you know, to just show up for anyone who's asking and be the mediator and just call on the teams and call on the forces for their freedom and empowerment and not have any real thoughts about it and not even know if you're doing it well or right and not even know if uh you know um you're doing anything really <laughs> and so it's it's always a precarious thing to be in this position because you can have a lot of experiences of it work quote unquote working like people go wow that was amazing thank you great but because you're really out of the way, you're kind of like, I'm not sure I did it. <laughs> you know, I didn't feel that good about the session. I thought I didn't do, do you very good at all, but that doesn't matter. That, that would be my ego, right? So it, it's sort of like, so we, we, caught, we have this thing called no praise, no blame, which is if the session goes well and everything works, um, I don't take credit. <laughs> And if it doesn't, I don't take the blame. <laughs> Sorry, I did what I was supposed to do. I shook my rattles and I, I got out my stones. And hmm? So now do you have a team, um, a team uh, in the unseen, shall I say, that works with you specifically? Or does the team change in terms of who you're working with? That's a great question. It's a combination of those things, I believe, in my experience. Um, a huge part of being this mediator is working with the, you know, I mean, if, if you can get the best team that's ever been to work on this person, why not, right? Even if it's like physical surgery, if you could get the best surgeons, would, wouldn't you, you know? And so in the non-physical, these teams are available to everybody and they're, they're non-denominational. It doesn't matter if it's Jesus or Buddha or 
we know the sayings, right? They, they don't care. They're just, they just want to help. Right. And so I have that and I have the care of my, my, you know, initiated by uh, lineages of shamans and other traditions that I, I call it the A team because in my estimation, they are the best I could get my hands on. And, um, so to speak, and, and yet, and my clients will have teams of angels and physical, non-physical beings and, and their own religions and their own whatever that um, are come with them. And, the, and there's huge overlap, as you can imagine, anyway. But, you know, we're like, hey, anyone, everyone, help. <laughs> Please help. You know, we are thankful that you show up for us. And that's and, huge. And this is tangible for you. Like, when you're working, this is a these entities are tangible to you. You can sense them, you can feel them. You, you, do you see them? Not always. And I think that's a really important point because I think a lot of people would just decide, no, I don't see them. So I don't know what you're talking about or I don't pray because I never feel it or I don't see what they see. And I think that's like a, it can do be a big disservice because I think the origins and essence of faith because if you could see it all, there's, it's like easy peasy, right? It's like, yeah, it's here, it's blasé, right? But the fact that we are physical beings and the, the non-physical is very difficult to access kind of on purpose or we'd all be floating out, like the place would be a mess, I think, um, in some ways. Um, so I think we want to be very physical, but I think um, the fact I don't always know if they're coming or if they're there. And I don't always see what's happening, like in that sense you're talking about where I could actually really know and like click that dial and move that thing in your energy field requires courage. It requires an act of faith. And that's what I was saying about it. I've done 10,000 sessions. They've all been largely successful. I don't know if this next one's even going to work because I just, I don't know. I may not see anything, I may not feel anything, but what I do have faith in and has been proven over and over is that if I call, they come. And like I said, I could go through a session feeling like, oh my God, I wasn't in a very good space. I wasn't feeling anything or seeing anything, but it's not about John. It's not about me being able to do that. It's about the team <laughs> and the person doing it. So my, courage is to show up every day anyway and do the work um even if i don't feel sense or see anything because you just don't have to right it's kind of a bonus if you do i think yeah. so yeah that's a good question and i think it you know it's really important to know that you you ask for help i mean and you you know you just, I mean, when you go into a surgery <laughs> and you've hired a doctor, let's say. Right. And you go, I'm out, I'm on anesthesia. I, I mean, you don't feel anything. You don't know if they did anything, but you kind of wake up thinking they probably did it, right? <laughs> they didn't just walk out and say, okay, you're good. <laughs> so it's the same kind of thing. Do we know how old shamanism is? I was looking because it feels like it's been around in the indigenous cultures in a way, like you said, it's been called a bunch of different things, but it yeah. feels like, it, it almost feels like to me, it's part of the, you know, the advanced civilization. And by no means do I think that we're an advanced civilization right now, certainly with the way the world is working. Yeah. Um, you know, people are screaming at each other right and left right now, but it feels like this was always like a core part of the advanced civilizations um, in their practice. Is that true? You know, from what I know and suspect, um, and, and there's a lot of unknown that no one I think would ever know, um, there's evidence, there's sort of archeological evidence that suggests it's been around for tens of thousands of years. The Caro themselves have a, have a origin story that goes back 15,000 years just in their own tribe, you know, if you read Sapiens, that book is really good about, you know, how far back and sort of the steps and the progress that had been made in, in Homo sapiens, you know, over the last 300,000 years, roughly. Um, evidence of Neanderthals having shamanic ritual and ceremony. So that goes way back. 
Um, that was way back. It was way back. So I think in the purest sense of its definition of, you know, it's the person in the village who kind of figures out how to get the fire burning, mm. probably, or how to make the hunt better or where to find the berries to eat and the ones not to eat. Like it could go way, way back. Um, maybe even in other species. I mean, it's fascinating, but there's, we speak of some, you know, certain certain animals, particular species that might have a little special something going on. Trees, like we speak of trees that get struck by lightning as shaman trees, that their conscious body is somehow a little different than the other tree, you know? So, so who knows? As a shaman, does all of this stuff, COVID and everything that's going on in the world right now, does it, does it, gift you a different perspective than everybody else or, or a, a special kind of point of view? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think almost all perception and experience is perspective, right? Like, so that's just a huge thing in general. And <clears throat> yeah, from the shaman's perspective, these types of events are incidental. The, the, the details of what causes people to go through contrast that like you said, may, may cause them to look, to, to force them to do some work, force them to look within, force them to do uncomfortable things or manage an uncomfortable situation, like being, being stuck in your apartment for a year or whatever, um, like the yogis would do on purpose, <laughs> like in caves, right? So, so the point being that it's sort of incidental that this happened to be a, a kind of virus that, that swept through a kind of pandemic and this and that. My Caro teaches many of the prophecies would speak of a time where it would get out of balance enough that, you know, like too many algae in a pond would eventually sort of start dying off from their own waste. And, so I think this is all related to that kind of thing. Right. It, it could have been anything, um, but it, it happened to be this. So we don't get too caught up in the nitty gritty of what's COVID, where did it come from? What does it mean? We call off the search for meaning in shamanism. We go, well, it is what it is. What do I want it to mean? You know, we bring the meaning, we bring the truth because you're the creator of your experience. Hmm. So your perspective will decide your experience of it. Not that it's not real. In other words, real stuff happens. I mean, you know, getting blown up or your leg blown off like a friend of mine in the Vietnam War or getting, you know, a disease or whatever. This is very real. And it's, so it's not about spiritual bypass where it's like, well, nothing really exists and it's all an illusion. And, but it is about, can I still have the experiences I want with one leg? Can I still have the experiences I want while I'm dying from COVID or a, or a crash or a fire or, or climate change or something? In other words, do everything you can to get out of the way and try to avoid these things if you can, because why not? I mean, I'd rather not. But when something happens, it's how you choose to experience through your perspective that will decide your quality of life. How you're said than done. Yeah, much easier said than done. <laughs> how, and, and how has COVID changed your life? Um, has it changed your life? Yeah, not, not much. Um, because I've been deliberately putting myself in these situations for most of my life, like a lot of people have. And so this is not, you know, it, for what's most interesting to me because of my, my greatest desire or purpose in life or prayers have been to have the world in my, my teacher's way of saying it turned right side up again to have the feminine come back into power and be respected and because I believe that's the source of all the problems fundamentally to have people be free and more people free and in their power than not so that we are healthier and more sustainable and 
having more pleasure than pain, more heaven on earth than hell on earth. I'd want to live in that world. I don't know how long, much longer it'll take or what'll cause it to finally get there. My work has been to try and make that happen one by one or in groups. Um, so for me, when I see something like this, I go, oh, <clears throat> this is cool. Maybe this actually will have an, an acceleration <laughs> factor of that. And for sure, that's, that's yeah. undeniable. It looks it, right? And I wish it was the easy, you know, on some levels, again, I, I was trying to do it more the easy way by just having people heal their, their stuff through ceremony and ritual, you know, do it on that level instead of the literal where it's getting slammed, you know, by a lot of disease and death and things. But, um, but nonetheless, it's, it's still that same opportunity and I think still the same promise. Well, and probably even more of an opportunity because right now people are kicked so hard that they're really seeking that ceremony and ritual to help them navigate here, right? And this is so awesome because it dovetails into what, what we're just heading into, which is this new age of Aquarius. Um, right. The alignment of Jupiter and Saturn, December 21st. Everybody's talking about it. Do you see that coming of age? I mean, do you see people? I certainly, from, from my perspective, I feel that people are much more open to um, really committing to having some rituals, sacred time, honoring their, their, their sacred body, their sacred space. And you're a catalyst for that. So your vision and you go hand in hand because you're helping ushering in all of that with what you do. Right, and the, yeah, exactly. The, 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 the opportunity to go within, to have this ritual and ceremony be more available to more people because of something like this certainly is exciting and these confluences and people search for more more depth um is is definitely what is needed right and it feels like you know and and i love this this the the story of the two planets coming together and creating the star of bethlehem again for the first time and you know 800 years and this whole concept of the return of the the christ consciousness however you want to say it right but it is about internally recognizing that you have that light and that power every individual ultimately has that same light and power to ask and receive to to do the things that all these prophets have spoken of that that even all of them say that we have everyone has not just them and this is kind of that moment where if you get it if you can get it if you can take it in that way, recognize that really all the work is internal. Doesn't really matter if anyone else is supporting that or doing the right things. It could be upheaval. In other words, all contrast, whether it's from, you know, so something extraordinary happening that kind of opens people's minds, sort of miracles and things, or something really, really painful, but anything that causes emotion a kind of emotional response, even like the stuff that's happening politically, the, the, the real separations that are just creating this massive, massive, you know, set of emotions that are uncomfortable. It's like, that's power because that discomfort, that difference between the, the two sides or what, you know, what you're feeling regards this sort of co conflict and this disagreement and this polarization that actually boosts both sides' prayer for the world to be better. And it doesn't have to be better in the way they specifically think, like this particular policy or this particular kind of setup or this one. It, it's just overall the, 
the, the core underlying desire for everyone to be happier, everyone to actually be living more of that heaven on earth. And so it doesn't really matter <laughs> to a shaman which side you're on or what or what's angering you or what's you know annoying you or making you sad. The fact is that's actually good because it's through body and emotions. And you know this in your Zuma, like this is what you do. I was talking about this the other day with somebody like you elicit powerful prayer because people are feeling something when they're watching you, listening to you and dancing. Well, it's interesting because, and I love that you brought this, this up because when I was told I was never going to dance again, mm -hmm. that, that contrast and that pain and that emotion was unbearable. It was unbearable for me. And every single moment I go out and I dance, I have all of that energy built up. So that angst and that desperation showed up as a very powerful asking. Yep. And then I was able to get into a place to receive. And that's where I learned how to receive. Mm -hmm. And then now sharing that with everyone. And you and I have similar missions is that I would love for everybody to realize, you know, you have you can have what you want and you yeah. know the concept of wait a minute i don't need to want anything there is no more lack all of that is like an illusion and it's something that i can only work out for myself and it's nobody else's responsibility but my own to work it out once that's all gone and you realize you can have anything then that heaven on earth really becomes a tangible reality yeah and it's experiential. So that's where that's where you can throw away all the, the nitty gritty of the details of how do I get that? Who cares? All you want is an experience. It, it doesn't matter how you get it. And so, and that's a feeling place, right? So that's why I would never want anyone to consider themselves less enlightened or needing more work if they're really emotional or they're really angry. That's that doesn't matter. That's actually a good thing that you just don't sit there and go, well, gee, I'd really like to feel better. No, you want to like, I really need to feel better. Or I'm not going to be able to live another day. And then it's like, then you're, the universe already knows what your brain wants. So you don't have to spend a lot of time like positive thinking or doing a lot of like, you know, mental stuff. You, you just have to be present with the angst or the or the sadness or the despair, whatever it is, enough to send that that signal out. And then the miracles start to find you, right? Like you don't even have to figure the it out. The bigger the desire, totally. The bigger the what is it? Abraham Hicks says that's yeah. the biggest, the bigger the bounce, right? Like yeah. the lower, the harder <laughs> the, the ball falls, the bigger it's gonna bounce up. Yeah. So the shamans like. The, the, the goal isn't sort of this non-physical transcendent place. That's a good tool when you need it at times, but in non-attachment and stuff, but no, the goal is to be like fully in your body and your feeling place, whether it's bliss or despair, knowing that that's your power. That's the feminine, that's the power. Mm -hmm. And so what if, now, if you're talking and you are talking to this community, what do you tell somebody who says, I hear this, I get it. So now what, what tools do I have? What do I do? I, I mean, obviously they can call you. You might be really. <laughs> you can get a session from me or any number of other shamans any way you want. You go to your. Sorry, Sean. Oh my God. Your phone's ringing off the hook. No, um, seriously, I mean, you just gotta, you, you gotta do it. Um, yeah, and I was gonna say, like, I have a bunch of, since the book and all that and the CD, like I did a bunch of YouTube videos, you know, there's a lot more material out there that I think is kind of kind of helpful for, for folks, but well, no. Well, I did a video for me um, for my daily home course that's that's right. now up on my YouTube channel. So that'll yeah, be, that'll be cool. for people to look at. Love that, yeah. Little couple of tools and things, but. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when, when you hear about what we just said and you go, okay, you know, like, <clears throat> uh, 
I know what I don't want because I'm feeling the contrast of the pain, whatever, whatever form it is, physical, emotional, mental, what have you. And, you know, I just knowing that that's natural and that, that that somehow shoots off this, this asking and that hopefully that finds me, then the only thing that could kind of mess with that, right, or our, our own mind <laughs> kind of, <clears throat> which we know all the wisdom teachings around psycho-spiritual work, mm -hmm. um, our own habits perhaps of, you know, if you're, if you're not wanting to get hit by a train, stop standing on the train track. Like, you know, you, there's certain things you can actually do physically that'll help. A um, little exercise, a little something, something. Um, but then, you know, there's something, 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 something. <laughs> I did. Sorry. All right, now you're speaking my language. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then there's these other layers that you can access, right? And so there's the mythic. That's the art, the music, the poetry, the ritual, the ceremony, the vision boards, the the shake and the rattles, the doing the dance. The, the these are ways to get deeper right into your subconscious right where your mind can't really get your mind might go oh, no i'm fine and then you actually start to do something and you start to you start to feel something or release something or so so the, the, a huge part of what makes shamanism shamanism and really a lot of practices that have built off of shamanism um are about the power of of ritual and myths and <clears throat> and those things, and that's all. Like, I'm, that's that's the homework I give my clients. Like, go do a bunch of that stuff, and it's listed on my website. But then, when you hire a, a shaman or you know anyone within that, or cap I guess capable or the ability to be the mediator to the soul, the level of the soul, then you can start to actually like clear the old blockages, patterns, imprints, and things that have built up that otherwise would have been released if we could cry, scream, and yell, right? So because we spent many thousands of years now kind of like suppressing that stuff, it could be in our energy field. And so the work I do helps to, you know, with my team helps to clear that just to make it easier. Again, it's about, which you can still do it lots of other ways, but this is kind of a, a very efficient way to do it, to get it done. Clearing those patterns you know, cutting cords, cutting connections to ancestral patterns, cutting, you know, doing extractions of entities that might be up taking up residence and messing with you, um, doing soul retrieval, bringing back your power from those times you were victim, perpetrator, rescuer, and reclaiming creator consciousness there. And, and then doing what we call destiny retrieval, which is a process that helps us to not only like <clears throat> with that emotion go to what kind of life would you rather be living, <clears throat> but to bring those patterns in kind of from the future because shamans have this relationship with time that's past, present, you know, like we can, we can move through time. And so being able to go forward to a, out of infinite possible destinies, the one you might really like um, and bringing those patterns in just gives you that much more positive influence on a deep level. So that's, Wow, it, sign me up. <laughs> it is really cool. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I've worked over many years now with people from all kinds of modalities and we corroborate, we do all these layers together. And, and yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, proven to be really um, a great way to get there. Uh, sooner rather than later, I guess you might say. Do you now do most of your work online or, I mean, do you anticipate being able to do groups again soon? You know, what's interesting is that <clears throat> I have, uh, as long as there's been online capability, <laughs> and I remember when there wasn't, um, I, uh, <laughs> I've been doing it that way. I mean, you know, I've, I've worked with people all, all over the world, have been fortunate in that way. And so a lot of it has happened, have always had to happen over Skype or phone or Zoom or, or whatever. And so it was nothing really new for me when COVID came along that that was a way to do it for those reasons. And so I've been mostly just doing that now almost entirely, even though before it was about 60 to 80% anyway of what I did. 
So I don't mind, you know, either way, but the, what I find is that it's, it's literally with this kind of work, not necessary to be in proximity at all. It's all non-local. It's all on the soul level, which is outside of space and time anyway. So all my sessions over, over, um, online have been as effective as in person and um so it certainly makes it more convenient in a way um i used to have to just travel a lot all the time do house calls and that started getting to me anyway (laughs) it's just hard to do and the effectiveness and the energy is still just as powerful like you said remotely because energy doesn't have the boundaries of this right i mean it doesn't have the boundaries nature doesn't have the boundaries hmm. you're still grounded when you're in an airplane at thirty-five thousand feet your first chakra is still connected to the earth you're still getting the benefit of that so there is no limit to space and time and location right ever anyway and it has so little to do with me John, that you don't need to be near me. You don't even have to be seeing me. It's, you know, phone is fine. Um, Because it's, again, that faith that when I call, they they go to where you are and they, the the non-physical forces of nature get this all done. What is the one thing you would want everybody, if you had the attention of the entire world for a moment, what was what would be the one thing you would want them to know for sure i would want them to know that again the unseen more than anything because it kind of goes back to your question a long time ago the unseen forces of nature in whatever form plant animal human angel beyond wherever star people from other whatever um literally want to help you and there's no condition you don't have to be a certain thing or do a certain thing or have been good or bad or otherwise there's all kinds of beings and you know that want you to ask just so they can help. Wow, is it so really that, that simple? It's really that simple. It's been, I mean, look, I, I, I know it make it sound easier than it is. It took me a lot of years to, to get to this place, okay? So it wasn't simple in my process, nor my teachers to be able to say that necessarily, but I can tell you from my experience, both personally and and through many, many um, much client work that, uh, yeah, it's it's unconditional. They, they, they just, you just, you can ask, you don't have to feel worthy. I know that's a big part of it. Most people feel that they just, they can't ask because they don't deserve it. They're not worthy. Who would help them anyway? or they're uncomfortable receiving. That's a huge one, especially for healers. You know, we, we like, we just want to be the givers. We want to be those people. We're physical forms of those people. If you just ask, and this has been my work all along, anyone who asks me to work on them, I'm going to say yes. They can pay me or not, doesn't matter. None of that, that doesn't, can't get in the way. It's, you, you could be you could consider yourself or have a track record of being like the like a horrible person <laughs> by whatever standard you want to say that or like an you know like whatever a, an amazing person <clears throat> makes no difference it, you're we're all equal souls we're all equal co-creators we're all equally here to ask and receive the earth takes everybody's waste and mulches it. It doesn't care what you've done or not done. The sun sh- rises and shines on you and grows your food. So it's kind of obvious. It should be obvious, right? In, in the physical sense. Mm. But, um, but in the non-physical, it's even so much easier because there's really no limitation. When you go non-physical, which I've done, and I've had that benefit of the death experiences, and then through the shamanic training, many more versions of that, that that what non-judgment really feels like like you really you really 
do recognize that this is a messy theater and there are no perfect saints and there isn't, there isn't, that's all been a bit of a fallacy and that everybody's got everything. And it's just a question of what you prefer to, you know, be experiencing that puts you in a position of, you know, being kind and sweet and gentle versus being violent or mean or, you know, whatever. Um, and it's all part of the theater. So people just need to know, it did, none of that has to do with anything. You, and you can call on any being. I mean, the religions came much after any of these beings ever existed, right? We kind of know that. So with this Bethlehem thing and December 21st and the Jesus and Christ and all that, like it's such a huge subject, Christmas, obviously. It's like, <clears throat> you know, he's, he, he, you know, this Yeshua, Yeshua Bar Yosef, his name in Aramaic or whatever, was a powerful shaman, a powerful healer. His mother Mary was even more powerful, taught him all that stuff. They were scenes. They were part of this shamanic group in the in the Jewish tradition. And from what I know and what I've studied, and you know, you can call on that being and he'll get it done, you know, or she'll get it done. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're you don't have to be Christian, you don't have to believe, you don't have none of that stuff. You just you just call and you know, and, and again, true for many number of other traditions and other beings and other, and I call them all because I, I'm like, <laughs> if anybody needs help, I need it. <laughs> I need it more than anyone I know in my life. So it's like, you know, why not? If they're going to answer and they're not, they don't care, they're unconditional, why not? I mean, we should all be doing it, right? Yeah, I mean, why that's how I live. That's why it's like, that's why I'm saying that's the most important thing I'd want anyone to know. I love that. Would you be willing to take us through something? Yeah, let's do it. Let's tap into that. What are we going to do? I'm going to, I'll be rattling and I'll uh, just do a quick guided journey to tap into that part of our being, that, that unconditional. So we know what it feels like to be that so that we can have the faith that there's others like I just said, that, that that's really true, right? And you could take advantage of these alignments and these, you know, mythic opportunities to find that in yourself and um, use it to um, ask and receive more freely for anything, any experience. Cool? Right on, I love it, thank you. <laughs> okay, so just relaxing and not important what's going on around you or in your mind, none of that gets in the way. But you could take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I just, I'd love for you to imagine, just use your imagination. That's the other thing. You don't have to be able to see anything, but you can imagine, and that's all that's, that's all it is. And just imagine that you're moving down from behind your eyes where you normally look out into the world. And you're moving down behind your mouth as if you can look out into the world from behind your mouth and down into your throat, looking out into the world from behind your throat. And if you were to look up, you'd see your head above you. And you keep moving down into your torso and stopping behind your heart and seeing your heart beating in front of you, right in front of you. Imagine what that might look like. And imagine now entering your heart and seeing the blood rushing by and the valves working. And in the center of your heart, there is a light, a beautiful sphere of golden, white, blue, shimmering light. The center of your soul 
And I want you to just enter that light, this beautiful sphere of light. There's no time and space, no stories, just eternity, your eternal soul. soul is connected through a column of light coming in through the top to source, to the source of all consciousness, of all things. It makes you a part of that. And there's a column of light going out the bottom of the sphere into the earth the mother of your body, the one who holds you and supports you in this magnificent experience of life on earth. And you recognize that your sphere of light expands it expands out beyond your body. And you can imagine you're floating on the surface of that sphere, looking inside of it and seeing your body inside of it. And then it continues to expand and you see everything around you inside of it. And it gets bigger and you see the whole earth inside of it and the galaxy as far out as you want to go, it's all within your sphere of light. And you feel this natural smile. this natural peace, this absolutely natural sense of love and appreciation for all creation, all the drama, all the pain, all the contrast, all the pleasure, all the planets, all the stars, all the beings, all within your sphere of light. And you recognize that if you go far enough, you merge with that source, you become the source anyway. But since it's kind of fun to be your individual soul, you begin to bring that light back down around the universe and around the galaxy back around the earth and back around your body and back into your beautiful heart. Still in that infinite part of you that is the center of your beautiful toroidal energy field. Connected to source and connected to earth. And you come back into your heart with the blood rushing by. This beautifully messy emotional body. The generator of your asking of your prayers of your creative ability, of your ability to create life beyond where it's been before, new experiences, new forms. It's wonderful to be here. 
and stepping behind your heart and seeing it beating in front of you. And the lungs expanding and contracting to either side, bringing in the air and the prana. Mm. The energy of your expression, your emotions. And back up through your throat. Back towards that amazing mind of yours that now is your servant that knows that it, it serves your creative dreaming, your creativity, your manifesting through the power of your body, your emotions, the masculine serving the feminine, this beautiful balance. God-like creative powers supported completely by all that is, all other beings who want you to experience that true self, your true power, and have fun with it, enjoy it. Enjoy the theater. And behind your eyes, back in this present moment, fully present. And if you need to, you can rub your hands together and feel your face, feel your body be fully present again. And I'm just gonna share this one insight with you that came up. Um, you know how we talk about boundaries, you know how we talk about protecting ourselves from influences and we, we understand physical boundaries and we understand mental and emotional and energy boundaries. And what I've learned recently, and I'm gonna write an article about this, I think um, in my blog is we also have boundaries in time some people are really capable of traveling back in time and forward in time. And you know how you get stuck in memories of the past, bad memories, bad traumas, and mm -hmm. or you worry about the future. And, and it's because you're sort of there and there. And it's almost like not right, not being present in the moment. We know all the wisdom teachings around that, addiction and all these things. But it's also really important to create boundaries in time to say, I don't want my past influencing, spilling over, as my teachers would say, into the present. Any more than I want you spilling over into my space right now, wherever you are, when I'm wanting, you know, peace and quiet or whatever. It's the same thing. I don't want this willy-nilly traveling through, through time, nor space, necessarily, <laughs> right? So that's the, that's the thing I think I'd leave you with is practice that. Think about that for a moment. What does it mean, right? To be in the present moment, that means a boundary between the past and a boundary between the future. And you can remember good memories of the past and you can dream your world into being in the future, but keep the rest out. <laughs> It's so, it's just so empowering and so incredibly beautiful. I'm, I'm, that was Aww. an extraordinary journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. I actually felt um, the expansion of my whole being in that. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. This is exactly what the world needs. And thank you for taking the time. I know you're a busy man and um <laughs> I'm just so grateful. Come on, you're a busy, busy. Man. never too busy. <laughs> you're a busy man. Everybody um, just ask. I'm happy to show up. I am I am eternally grateful for this gift and I am eternally grateful for you 
in my life and that I get to share you with my community and beyond. And thank you. Thank you for oh. spending this time with me. Honestly, thank you. I, I am that much more grateful for you having me here with you and your watchers, listeners, whoever comes upon this because I, again, would just be sitting around waiting if it weren't for, <laughs> you know, kind of doing nothing. Um, so. All right, that's it. You're sitting around <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Working on, but no, I mean, honestly, really it's my complete honor and pleasure really to be asked and to have you ask me especially and connect with you in this way and your your world and network and so anytime thank you i'm going to leave all the information on how you can connect with shaman john uh it's still shamanjohn.com right yeah, it still is. <laughs> so, I mean, you need not do much more than that. Shamanjohn.com. He, you are now located in Santa Barbara. Is that true? Yeah, that's the deal. And um, so maybe when this is all done, said and done, and we can all gather together again, I'd love to have a group shamanic session. Oh, totally. Anytime. I'm, I'm there. Anyone, right? Like. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. This is the time. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I am feeling so empowered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Mm, thank you, Josette. Thank you. Grateful.